Hi, welcome to another Teardown Tuesday, where I tear stuff down so you don't have to. But I know you still want to, because it's cool, it's fun. <laughs> so, what do we got? We've got one of these voltage detection sticks. Let's check them out, see how they work, see what's inside. And you know what we say here on the EEV blog, don't turn it on, take it apart. But... Hmm, I don't see any screws. Eh? Could require a little bit of persuasion. Hmm, let's go. And of course these things come in many different brands, but uh, they're all generally this uh, stick type thing. They've all got a uh, pocket clip up here for your uh, average nerd who wants to stick it in their pocket. And this is the Fluke uh, Volt Alert here, but we're not going to look at that one today. What we're going to tear down is this ideal uh, brand, Volt Aware. And this Volt Aware one is a basic uh, twist on, twist off type. It's Cat 4 rated. Uh, it claims to have a detection range of 40 to 1000 volts AC. There's a button here which uh, turns the uh, beeper on and off. And it comes with all sorts of standardy goodness as well. ULCE rated and stuff like that. Let's see if we can take this thing apart. Now this is the twist on, twist off type. But you just It's not really obvious how to take the thing apart, but you just pull it like that and it's got these guide channels down in there and a mating little bump down in there which sort of uh, slides the two halves and of course it's powered from two AAA batteries. Don't need those and there won't be anything in there so all of our electronics is down in there and there won't be much. I can sort of see through the transparent uh, end there you can see that there's a little tiny board it'll probably have one chip on it couple of passive components and uh, there's the uh, there's the uh, sensor probe out the front there it's just a flat bit of metal there and uh, well we'll have to apply some force to get this sucker open I think and you can see that the battery uh, contact there when it slides in to there it actually makes when you twist it it makes contacts with one of those internal pads down in there so that's a rather neat little solution I don't mind that at all First thing we're going to try is I see these little holes around here like this. Maybe we can get a screwdriver in there and pry it off perhaps. That would be one of my first guesses. Well, I'm not having much luck prizing this thing open. I'm not sure how they've assembled it, whether they've... Um, this is sort of, uh, this uh, plastic end is sort of really uh, snapped on first and they insert the PCB and it locks in place. I've tried to pull the board out but uh, with a pair of long nose pliers but that's rather tricky so I'd probably ordinarily get the uh, Dremel out and drill right around there, just grind it around and cut it off but uh, that's, the Dremel's not in the lab at the moment so uh, just get some side cutters and uh, try and compensate. Ugh. This is ugly. Excuse me. Wow, well that was really thick uh, plastic around that thing and it's, uh, it was quite messy. But there you go, there's two chips. So I'm going to wiggle that board out, which is the official technical term for it. Double-sided load. Look at that. It's rather interesting. Hmm, I like this one. Let's see if we can get the board out. Well, that was wedged in there really well. <laughs> Let me tell you, I had to cut away the plastic but it looks like it's going to pop out like that. Hey, that's a rather neat solution. I really like the design of that. So I suspect these ones are a little bit more advanced than just a basic uh, electrostatic uh, digital uh, detector that just dis detects the electrostatic field. It's still detecting the electrostatic field around a wire with the uh, probe tip and a high impedance input, but uh, there's probably some uh, smart filtering or something going on in there, and uh, maybe even a custom device to actually do it. Why else would you rub the numbers off? I don't know. Maybe it is uh, incredibly simple, um, but they just want you to think it's complex. Hmm, who knows? And here's the board under the microscope. I'll attempt to uh, do this. Sorry, I'm actually hand-holding my uh, little compact camera at the moment against the uh, stereo microscope. So this is really hard. It could fade in and out. But look at that. They've gouged out 
that chip that uh, obviously connects to the antenna there. It's got the uh, date code 1009C. I'm presuming that's the date code, the ninth week 10, but they've gouged out that I see. The bastards. So we can't tell what that is. And maybe we can get a closer view of the LED there. There we go. That's one of those uh, four pin uh, square packages. It's a red green uh, combined uh, dual color LED. And of course, they've got one. Uh, top and bottom, which of course will uh, allows the light to uh, show out both sides of the module itself. So that's really rather nice. There's a tactile switch there. There's another IC there, and that one is unbranded. It's got, regardless of the angle, I cannot see any branding on that chip at all. And check out that bodge resistor with the 302 on it there. That's a nice little bodge. That one, they've got uh, a transistor or something there in that SOT23 package. And there's the uh, buzzer there, which is rather nice. It's uh, round and it's sunken into the board like that. They've put a cutout and they've got two pads um, on the end here where it, where, where it connects in. That's a nice bit, of, uh, nice bit of mechanical design engineering. That They've got a couple of more uh, passives up near the antenna up there don't know um, the topology of this thing but it's obviously detecting the electrostatic field and uh, there's a couple of diodes I'm presuming that there are diodes there those black ones and uh, that's it there's some passive devices and oh, very disappointing I was hoping to trace out this board I really was I was hoping that we'd uh, It'd be like a, um, you know, a really easy double side and we'd be able to trace it out. It'd have the part numbers on it. It'd use some identifiable um, ICs. And those passives around the front end there, no surprise at all. You'd expect, because this is an electrostatic detector, you'd expect uh, some very high value resistances there. And that's exactly what we see. See the T226 up there? That's a 22 meg resistor, 395, you know, 3.9 meg. And uh, there's another four point, a couple of... Uh, another 4.7 meg and a uh, 470k. So um, no no surprises there at all. The uh, 226 up there, the 22 meg, that'll most likely be in series with the uh, probe tip there going into the detection I see on the bottom of it, this gouged out thing here. And um, yep, what that one is, I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. And my guess for this input chip with the numbers rubbed off was going to be a uh, Smith trigger, just a Smith trigger logic gate uh, device, like a 7414 or something like that, or a 4000 CMOS equivalent device, uh, because this is a very common uh, technique for um, using um, electrostatic uh, sensitive uh, touch switches and things like that. You can do it with just a, a uh, Smith trigger. So I did a bit of a uh, patent search here and I came up with this uh, United States uh, patent number 5,103,165 from the April 7th 1992 and it's from a uh, James M. Surratt's um, uh, from Rayleigh, North Carolina and uh, I presume he worked for uh, Static Control Components Inc. Um, and they, um, it was uh, filed in uh, 1990 and was granted in 1992 and uh, let's take a look at it it is well the uh, name of it is insulated handheld non-contacting voltage detection probe and bingo that's pretty much exactly what we've got here and uh, it's the pen style uh, probe it's even got the uh, pocket clip on it but uh, most importantly if we go down bingo we've got a schematic let's take a look at it and what we've got down here, if you decode all the patent is, you eventually find the uh, part number for the IC, and it's an MM, um, MN14584, uh, uh, which is a uh, standard uh, CMOS uh, Schmidt trigger. So um, you could uh, use like a 74HC14 or another 4000 series equivalent or uh, something like that. It's probably not um, that fussy although you might have to uh tweak tweak the values for uh the individual device um actually use the 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 particular brand and uh model number but it's basically just that it's a 
it's a hex Schmidt trigger. And here's the waveforms here, and it's got another uh, uh, schematic there, but here's the main schematic. So um, basically, and it's a 14-pin chip. And if you remember the uh, look at the photo for the our board, it's also a 14-pin chip. Uh -huh. I don't think it's a coincidence. They're probably, most likely, uh, using this uh, same circuit here and they've probably got a, a a resistor on the input it shows the antenna connects directly to pin one which which is the input on one of the uh, hex um, uh, Schmidt inverter uh, gates but uh, I'd say they've probably got a resistor in series they've got another resistor going to ground and the output goes through the cap so we might need to uh, redraw this thing a little bit just to make it a little bit clearer but I think we might have the basic operation of the front end here and here's this same circuit, but redrawn in, ta-da, DaveCAD. And uh, what we've got here is uh, up in the top left, we've got our antenna input. It's exactly the same uh, circuit as before, except uh, I've redrawn it with the uh, Schmidt inverters in there to instead of just the big, uh, just the block chip, which, you know, doesn't make it very descriptive at all. You've got to sort of fill in the blanks there. Um, it's not as easy. This one's a bit easier. Anyway, we've got our antenna input here. We've got our uh, voltage uh, detection, well, antenna, probe, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we've got a, just a simple voltage divider here. The value of that voltage divider will be um, set dependent upon uh, the input voltage range you require and the uh, threshold voltage of your Schmidt inverter here. And uh, then it's uh, AC coupled and pulled high. Um, and then uh, that's for basically when there's no um, input uh, voltage there so it's pulled high and then um, the input uh, to this Schmidt inverter goes into this diode and resistor and cap arrangement here which sort of uh, smooths out um, the AC voltage and then puts it through another couple of uh, Schmidt inverters and turns on the transistor so basically the output transistor and this LED uh, turns on when the input uh, voltage from the antenna is above a certain threshold there and that's all there is to it it's pretty darn basic and if we take a look at the waveforms here from the patent we can translate those to the Dave Cad schematic and I've labeled them exactly the same as the uh, points on the waveform so point A is our AC um, input and that's the um, and that's a reduced uh, voltage input depending upon the voltage divider there and B is uh, of course the squared up in input uh, because that's what a Schmidt trigger does a very slow changing varying uh, input signal as it transitions through the uh, Schmidt trigger threshold levels um, squares up the input so you sine wave in and you get a square wave out assuming it meets the uh, threshold voltages so what's uh, point C here doing why have this resistor and cap at all it doesn't seem to make much sense because if you look at signal D here this output D is just an inverted uh, signal of point B here and if you are talking about the 50 Hertz uh, signal and these values are set um, at a specific uh, design value, then that's exactly what you're going to get. B and C, you can actually do without those components, assuming that the input is, uh, is you know, exactly on frequency and exactly doing the right thing that you want to actually detect. And it probably doesn't make much sense at the moment, but it might when we start looking at uh, further on with uh, what's happening with point E here. Because uh, if, let's say, we've got a very low frequency um, input, then uh, a, a low frequency input lower than our detection frequency, then uh, C, if you look at this uh, cur discharge curve here, it won't instantly go back there. It'll go through both thresholds, and that'll change the output waveform D to be different from just the um, an inverted uh, version of input signal B here. And that will start to uh, affect the uh, smoothing value that we'll look at in part E here. So we get our output signal D, which is a uh, square wave, once again, based on our um, input uh, 50 slash uh, 60 hertz waveform, and it just uh, smooths it out uh, between the uh, threshold voltages of the of this uh, Schmidt inverter down here, based on the value of these two resistors need to be set, um, just to put it uh, smack in the middle of the uh, threshold voltage. So once the input uh, goes 
above a, uh, a certain level, and that's to um, get rid of any uh, any issues with uh, like a duty cycle if noise does get uh, through, and it's not the correct. Uh, duty cycle, then it's probably may not uh, actually uh, reach the threshold voltages or something like that. So that's just another mechanism to uh, sort of filter things out a little bit, and then it uh, invert and then it uh, double inverts that or buffers it to drive the output transistor, which drives the LED, and that's pretty much all there is to it. And that is the basic operation of one of these voltage detection sticks. Oh, check out this. You're going to love it. N next to uh, 10 here. Here is what it says. Figure 8 may use circuit parameters as follows. The diode is a 1N 4148. Fair enough. Transistor is a BC 847. Fair enough. LED is a whatever. But look at the resistor values. R1, 18.5 milliohms. <laughs> 65 milliohms, 200, 65, 10 milliohms for R6 got to be shitting me. This <laughs> thing's going to have a hell of a hard time working with uh, resistor values in the order of milliohms. So clearly what's happened here is the um, patent attorney who uh, wrote this uh, translated the good circuit description into uh, patent ease, you know, garbage like this, has thought that uh, megohms means milliohms. The megohms symbol must equal milliohms. So oh, I'm going to write milliohms in there. And well, it's not going to work at all. And uh, clearly the uh, the guy who actually designed this thing hasn't checked it because that's a glaring mistake. It's ridiculous. So what's with the second chip on the board? Well, that one is uh, probably just uh, to drive like a pulse uh, stretcher latch kind of thing to uh, drive the buzzer and the LEDs in the intended uh, way for this particular product. But I think it's probably using this basic uh, front end or, you know, maybe a slight uh, variation of it because uh, it matches up. I haven't actually traced out the uh, PCB uh, yet and I probably don't bother because I think it's probably going to use this circuit or a variation of it. And there you go. That's the uh, ideal volt alert voltage stick. And I think... Probably most uh, voltage sticks are going to work in a very similar way with a similar front end like this. So um, if you have any better um, information on exactly um, uh, how these things work or maybe even some uh, alternative uh, chipsets, some specialized chipsets on the market that might be able to do it or some other uh, patents, jump on the uh, forum and share them with everyone and we can all discuss it on there. So there you have it. If you like Teardown Tuesday... Give the video a thumbs up, that helps a lot. Don't know what we've got in store for next week, but waiting's half the fun. Catch you next time.